Thank you very much. I think I should have written a longer bio. Everybody's bios were fabulous, and then mine was just so short and sweet, but thank you very much. So I am TJ Tate, and I am honored to be here today at today's Chattanooga TEDx talk to talk to you about community resiliency and sustainable communities on behalf of Green Spaces. And I am new to Chattanooga. I just moved here during the pandemic. Uh, but I'm going to put a pause on that for a moment and just kind of touch on what my introduction was all about. So I am a marine scientist, and I have studied the ocean for over 20 years. So if you're like me, you think about that and you say, why the hell is she in Chattanooga? And I've asked myself that so many nights that you have no idea. And it wasn't until a few months ago that it kind of came into reality about why I was actually here. So just so you have some background, I passed up an amazing job in Seattle, which is one of my favorite cities in the United States, which also has an amazing ocean for me to do lots of good work. Um, but I decided I needed to move to a small town in Tennessee and work for Chattanooga's sustainability nonprofit. And I'm still kind of questioning every day, but it did become clear one night when I was sitting on my porch with my next door neighbor. Now I can tell you some of the politically correct answers, right? Now my mom lives in Kentucky, she's getting older, her health is failing, she is my best friend in the entire world, so it was very important for me to live near her. And I'm a single mom, I have a 10 year old daughter who is the light of my life, and my ocean work took me overseas, usually for weeks at a time, and I just didn't wanna be that type of a mom. Green Spaces, an award winning nonprofit, right? Doing amazing work, not just for Chattanooga, but for the whole entire surrounding region, for the people, the planet, and for our community. All right, all of those are true. And I, you can't deny that those are true. But there was also a night when I was sitting on my porch with my new neighbor, Matt, who happen, happens to be sitting right back there. So everybody say a wave at Matt, because you're gonna hear a lot about him <laughs> as his face turns bright red. We were sitting on our porch, and we like to call these evening visits a porch sit. So if you don't do it with your neighbors, I highly recommend it. It's a great time to get together. So we sit on our porch and one night we were just kind of talking, um, analyzing work, relationships, talking about kids, and kind of figuring out this whole big thing of life as we typically did on our evening. And he actually looks at me. Where'd he go? Let me, there he is. He's gonna show up, I promise. There he is, there's Matt. <laughs> so we were sitting on our porch after having a conversation and he looked at me and he said, do you know what you are? You are hope. I'm gonna cry. As you can imagine, I was completely floored. And before I go on, I want you to know that Matt has given me per complete permission to be able to tell our story tonight, which is why he is here. He shared with me that our conversations over the past few weeks had given him courage, courage to come out of his shell, introduce himself to some of our neighbors in our community who were flying pride flags, and to be more true to himself. Now, Matt and I are your typical community neighbors. Hell, we just threw a block party so that we could get to know everyone in our neighborhood just a little bit better. We do the stereotypical things, right? We recycle, we don't use single-use plastics, all that good stuff, right, that's pretty simple. But at the heart of it, we're just two middle-aged people who come together at the end of the day to sit on our porch and have a conversation. So he shared with me the reason why I was here before I even knew it. Now this is a man who is 60 years old. He's been married for 35 years. He's raised three amazing children. And he is finally just coming into a place in his own life where he is accepting himself for who he is for the first time. This is a person that inspires me, telling me that I inspired him to do something courageous. I thank him for that every day because that was the light bulb moment. That's when I realized why I was here. It was hope. I moved here to this amazing city that I'm learning to love every single day for hope. I moved next to this amazing man who I'm learning to love more every single day because of hope. I started working at Green Spaces because of hope. See a thread here? It's gonna go through the entire speech. So I hope nobody's opposed to a little bit of hope today. 
But as we were sitting on our porch having this conversation and the light bulb went off, I actually went into work the next day and I sat down with my executive director and I said, I know why I'm here. He's like, you're not gonna run to the aquarium and take a job there. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm still gonna focus on my ocean work, but I'm here to focus on the work that Green Spaces is doing. And what Green Spaces does is provide hope, but tangible hope, real world solution pro to the, all the problems that our world has been facing for the last two years and beyond, but in the last two years specifically. And we do that by providing jobs. We do that through community outreach to people just like yourselves so that we can take actions as humans so that we can live for a better, healthier planet. We do this by providing safer, healthier homes for people to live in. And we're starting to close the gap on food and health disparities because no one should ever have to make that difficult choice of putting a healthy meal on the table or paying their light bill. Now, Green Spaces looks at things just a little bit differently. We look at things from a holistic perspective. We realize that this whole world of sustainability can be very vague and overwhelming at times. And we try to break it up into small bite-sized pieces. But to do that, we have to look at the big picture, right? So to sum it all up, Green Spaces is about regenerating. Now, regenerating to me is one of my favorite words in the English language because it means to renew or to restore. But it also means to look at things from a circular perspective. Now, we've all heard the term circular economy and people's eyes glaze over, it starts to get a little hairy and people don't wanna go there. So we're gonna think about it from the perspective of mom's apple pie. It's circular, it's delicious, and you can't just bake one piece of it. Just like we can't go and attack some of these sustainability issues by only looking at one little sliver. We have to look at the whole pie, right? And a pie takes ingredients. It takes patience. It takes creativity. It takes a lot of patience if you're me because I'm a terrible cook. But it takes all of that to be able to create something that other people want to enjoy, but more importantly, that other people want to recreate. That's what Green Spaces is all about. But what are these pieces of this pie? And what do we work on? And how do we make them more manageable so that people just like you can have those little bite-sized chunks of sustainability? Well, a few years ago, we gathered together about 100 members of our community, people just like yourselves. And we started to identify what are these big, overwhelming sustainability initiatives or these problems that we have and how could we start chipping away at them by creating some goals. So the things that we came up with, with all these community leaders, were community resiliency, energy efficiency, mobility, healthy ecosystems, material waste, and of course my favorite, healthy clean waters. So what we did was we created goals, long-term ambitious goals of how we could start to chip away at some of these sustainability initiatives, and then we applied strategies and tactics to use to be able to get there. And what came out of this big planning session was a big document of hope that we call the Chattanooga Integrated Community Sustainability Plan. I don't expect anybody to remember that because it's a big, long mouthful. We call it the ICSP. What it really means is that, that it is a roadmap. And if you have listened to the speakers over today and what everybody's talking about, everybody has chipped away at some of those, whether it's mobility, whether it's community, whether it's waste management, and they have chipped away at all of those big hairy goals because that's what the ICP, ICSP is supposed to do. So how do we take that, this big community plan, and turn it into something in an actual bite-sized bite that people are engaged in? It's because it's about community, and community means people, right? So within green spaces, we have a program called Build It Green. It's a workforce development program. And when you think workforce development, you just think technical skills. Well, we look at it past the technical skills to the soft skills, the showing up, being present, being committed, actually being committed to yourself, to your community enough to have a job. So I'm gonna let our two directors tell you just a little bit about the Build It Green program. I hope. Build the Green is a workforce.
Workforce Development Program that's co-hosted by Green Spaces and Build Me a World. Um, it's pretty innovative and it focuses on, on sustainable construction methods and soft skills and mentorship. And we were kind of thinking about, you know, a school to, to not only help uh, young guys in the core of the city uh, learn more about themselves, but help organize the community. Because a lot of communities that seem to distress us are not going to are not going to be changed from the outside. They're going to change from the inside. Mike Tyson, who's not everybody's hero, he said once that everybody's got a plan until they get hit. You know, um, a lot of these young guys have been hit all their life, and now they're building a plan. You focus on the process, not the results. You focus on the process. You're building the infrastructure to something great. The results will come. You all. So that's our Build It Green program. We like to call it BIG. So now I'm going to talk to you about one of the graduates of BIG. The gentleman over here in the orange, his name is Alan Shropshire. Now Alan is actually up in Nashville in this picture with several, several other BIG graduates and one of the directors because we were winning an, an award for environmental excellence and outreach education for the state of Tennessee. Alan was able to go up there, receive the award, and actually shake the hand of our governor. Now, Alan's life didn't start out this way. Alan's life started out in his 20s as he got mixed up in the criminal justice system. He had to serve time for the cram crimes that he had committed, but then he also worked to have his record expunged for crimes that he was falsely accused of. But what it did was it showed him that he had a responsibility to help others that did not have a voice and got lost in this criminal justice system. But to be able to start on that path, he realized that he needed to do some work with himself first. That's when he found BIG. He became one of the first people in our first training program, and he immediately rose to a place of leadership. It was because of his determination and his commitment, not just to himself, but to his other team members and to his community where he was working. So much so that when he graduated, we offered him a part-time job as a outreach coordinator for Green Spaces where he came to work for us so he could continue his mission of helping other people. And when we asked Alan where he wanted to be in 10 years, he said he wanted to be running a nonprofit that was focused on criminal justice. And guess what? That's exactly what he's doing. He's working for Caleb and he is co-chairing the criminal justice task force. He's doing exactly what he set out to do. 
So now I'm just merely scratching the surface here, and I've just talked about one story that shows how we as community, as change makers and as leaders, when we come together and we work with people, we can make a difference. And then we start to be able to address those big hairy goals that we talked about earlier, energy efficiency, finding carbon neutrality, having healthy ecosystems, clean water, and finding resilient communities. This is just a start. This is just one story. Just a few more members of the Build It Green program. So when I start to think about things that get a little bit overwhelming to me, I always come back to this is my favorite quote. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. Keep it simple. As for Matt, my neighbor is doing great. Hope abounds with him. He is dating. He's flying his pride flag on his house. This is our nightly porch sit, as you can see. And we're actually blending our two families together as we're buying a home together. I know, I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> but hope is the motivator, right? It's the thread that ties us all together. Hope is the motivator for change. As we start to bake this big, delicious apple pie so that we can all work toward a sustainable, equitable future for us all. So as we leave today, I just ask one thing. I want you to think about what your Matt moment is. Everybody needs to be, have somebody tell them that they are more capable, more courageous, and more brave than we ever give ourselves credit for. We have so much work to do, but when you give someone that ray of hope, we can all do it together. If you can't think of anyone, then think of who you can give some hope to. Thank you very much.